afternoon, everybody. How is everyone doing in the chat? It's good to see you guys for episode two of One Verse One. This is the show where we take a little bit of a look back into uh, the life of some of the favorite streamers that you guys have on Twitch uh, and other industry professionals. And uh, in the second hour, we will be going over a little bit how they got into Twitch and what they're doing today. So today's guest is Sacriel, none other than. How are you doing today, man? Hello. How Hello. I'm doing really well. You just got off, uh, you, geez, you were streamed for like five hours, right? Yep. A little stream today. A, a little stream fun. today. That's like my, yeah. my typical morning stream is like a five-hour stream. Are you going to stream after this? You were saying maybe you might. I'm not sure yet. I think Shadow wants to watch shows. Yeah, so you should probably just ditch her and just kind of go ahead and continue streaming. I'm yeah, sure everyone. Carry on with the yeah, business. that's what every good streamer does to their significant other. Anyways, um, so I wanted to start out a little bit, you know, um, give you guys an insight into how I know Sacriel. Uh, I found one of the reasons I started the show, and I said this in the first episode, is because I've met so many great people through Twitch, just really genuine uh, wonderful people and I know so little about them outside of Twitch so hopefully the purpose of the show will be to get to know uh, Sacriel a little bit better for you guys to get to know Sacriel a little bit better and get a side of uh, him that you guys maybe don't uh, see every day on stream and uh, hopefully come up with a catalog of all of our favorite streamers and industry people and that people can go back to and, and, and look at later and get to know uh, them as well so anyways without further ado my little my little tidbit story with Sacral. Um, One second, I think people say my voice isn't coming through. I'm not sure. Your voice isn't coming through very loud. He I'm sounds sure. very muffled. It says Sacral's voice underwhelming to yours. Anybody else? Okay, we can fix this. No worries. Can you turn yourself up or try to? Uh, actually, maybe it's one second. Okay. Might be the old settings in here. This never happens on live shows, ever. Ever. While I'm while I'm doing that, you can tell your story. Here, I'll go ahead and uh, turn myself down a little bit, and maybe we can turn us both up. Let's try, let's try that real quick and see how that. Oh, there we go. Go ahead and say something now. Hello, I'm English. Yeah, is that a little bit better? I'm sure it is. Anyways, I'll go ahead and tell my story of uh, Sacral. When I first started streaming, um, I was very new to the whole space of Twitch. I hadn't uh, been streaming very long, maybe like a couple of weeks. And um, I was playing Neverwinter, uh, this free-to-play MMO, and Sacriel came into my stream. And at the time, I had no idea that Sacriel streamed. I didn't know who he was. I, I had never met him before. And he just came in and he, asked, he was asking questions about Neverwinter. And I was answering them to the best of my ability. Uh, I think you donated like 25 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that. And then tweeted me out to all of his fans and uh i had i, I had no idea uh that again sacro was a streamer and it was very cool of him to come into my stream especially when i've only been doing it a, you know two or three weeks and be able to uh you know support me and try to get me um where he was at you know because he was following his dream here on twitch as well uh and that always stuck with me uh a lot and it wasn't until pax east that i i really got to know uh Sacral and shannon as well and um it, it, it's just been an incredible experience being friends with him. So, again, I want to go back and talk to Sacro a little bit about the kind of person he is and, and why he's such a lovely, sexy motherfucker. And uh, <clears throat> maybe get to the bottom of it. So, let's just start at the very beginning. All right? Okay. <clears throat> you as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. What was life like for Sacro as a young individual? Sexually confusing. Sexually confusing. Uh, you know, I'm not surprised by that answer. I'm just gonna go ahead and sip my uh, coffee here. No, but tell us where you where did you grow up? Where um you're from the UK? Have you have you been there your whole life? Where you know where were you born? All that good stuff. I was born in Englandshire. Um, no, I was born in a place called Derbyshire. Derbyshire, we say in England. We don't actually say Shire in England. Like all the in, in a in a place name, you always say Shire. So I'm I'm from Derbyshire. Um. We wouldn't say Leicestershire, we'd say Leicestershire, Worcestershire, as in the sauce. So I grew up in a place called Derbyshire, and I didn't leave there for like 20-something years. Like, I lived there all, all my life until Shannon got her first job with Dean Hall, and we moved down to London. Um, so yeah, I grew up as a kid in Derby, um, bullied at school, had to find an escape. My escape was gaming. 
realized I was pretty good at gaming when I whooped all my friends and, um, and here we are. So, so you're, so bullying kind of pushed you towards gaming, like mm -hmm. as in you weren't, you weren't the, you weren't able to, I don't know, socialize well, w were you able to socialize well or, or was there just a couple yeah. of assholes that were there? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't bullying. Like you like the crazy stuff. Like you, you know, you hear nightmares, like you go to school, get beaten up every day, money taken off you, all that stuff. But it was more like, I had a few friends, but they were more the nerdy people that played like, um, desktop warhammer and that kind of stuff and they programmed on computers and you know that kind of stuff there was all the cool kids that played all the sports and and whatever um but i i i didn't i wasn't don't get, don't get me wrong i wasn't like i went to school and i was bullied every day and they took my money i was i was able to socialize i had a, a, a circle of friends but they were more than nerdy friends and we would always talk about oh have you seen that you just watch, you watch star wars have you you know have you seen this new game that's coming out what console have you got all that kind of stuff but um so what, was, what, 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 um, what age was that around? Like when you, what was like the first video game you got into? Like, what, like when you think of like the first gaming, can you remember? Yeah, I can actually. And there's, there's a few, there's a few caught like key moments in my early life that put me on the path to where I am now. And the first one was, I used to play, um, my dad got me like a spectrum or something. We used to play these really shitty games where the, like the characters are literally like ASCII art. Like your character's like an at symbol head with like a forward slash for arms and it would, you know, that kind of stuff. And I once loaded up this game and I, I got to the code instead of the game. And I sat there reading it. And it was like, I could see like where, the, where it was saying like, call this and bring up the menu and this is how much health you've got. And I was like, oh, add a zero. Now I've got more health. And I'd like mess around with the code. And my dad encouraged me to do that a lot. So your dad's yeah. like, cheat, son, do it. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Give I, yourself I know, yeah. everything. Take would, every advantage in life. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'd, I'd edit the games and, and, and it gave me like a real appreciation for the beauty of gaming. Like to see what, that some dude could write a bunch of text on a screen, but when you run it, you'd actually have a game and someone had to figure out what the story was and what the graphics were and how, how the balance was and, and all this stuff. So that really got me my mind going and why, that's why I've been a coder like all my life. I've always dabbled in code here and there because of that. But one of the first experiences I had was um, Blizzard. Fucking Blizzard. You know those guys? They always I don't make... know who you're talking about. I, I've I think never they heard. Made, they make a couple Bl of games. Blizzard? Kind of the... Yeah. Blizzard. It's like when snow comes down and it's like everybody can't use the airport, yeah, right? I think they're from Canada or something. Yeah. Oh, Oh. yeah. 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 I've heard of them. There's like they worked with Avril Lavigne or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't exactly. know. Um, but yeah, my brother went to college and he brought home a laptop, a black and white laptop. Uh, oh no, the game was the game was in black and white, and he had the Warcraft One Orcs and Humans demo on it. And he wait, was it like, was in black and white. Yeah, I I, I, didn't, I I remember it as black and white. I'm sure it was black and white. I can't. It was. It, it, was it might have been. I don't know. I played. I played I, I the color know. version, but I'm sure. I'm sure that there were like black just, and white versions see, out there. Maybe he just like didn't install his graphics drivers or something, or he did. His graphics were on like eight bit instead of sixteen bit. There was no color. Some stupid shit. I don't know. So we put it down and he's like, play this. And I'm like, what is it? And it was the first RTS I'd ever played. I'd played June actually, but it was the first RTS once I'd kind of matured a bit. And um, I remember there's this defining moment where he was trying to do this mission and he kept dying. So he'd like click on his barracks and he'd make a soldier and it'd pop out and he'd make another soldier and it'd pop out and make another soldier and pop out. And he'd click on one soldier, drag the mouse up to the enemy base, click move, drag back down to his base, grab another soldier. And he kept sending them in. And basically, whenever they went in, they got 3 v one by the enemy soldiers. And he was like, this is impossible. And I just dragged a box around his soldiers and went, look at this. You can just send them all. And it was at that moment that I learned something. And I was able to demonstrate it to my brother. And he employed it and went, holy shit, I had no idea. And I and it just something in my head went, ding. Like, oh, that was fun. And from that point on, I loved to like get a game. And instead of just play it and enjoy it, I'd try and break it down and try and learn it. And then when I go to school, people are like, oh, I'm stuck on level two. And I'm like, oh, have you tried using this? And I teach them like different things they could do in, in games. Um, I think I've set me on my path. Is um, So you said you said that your your father encouraged you to get into the code. Did or Was he into development at all? Or was he just simply interested in the fact that you were getting into uh, this code and manipulating it for the games that you're playing? Because I know if Junie, like if Junie had done that, my daughter... If she had done that, I'd be like, you're the most genius motherfucker I've ever seen, ever. So I'd be like, you know, like you do whatever you got to do. So was it yeah. like that or was it more like a development thing or what? No, no. So my dad's not a game developer or anything. Um, when we got 
our computer. I used it so much, I ended up teaching him how to use the computer. But my dad is very intelligent and very supportive. And um, he's he's good at math and stuff like that. And he was, before before he did his engineering job, he had some kind of job where he did Excel stuff. So he, he knew how to code like Excel formulas and he knew the logic and the basic like building blocks of code, I guess. So he he saw me doing it and he encouraged me and he was there because he had more experience than me. But it wasn't like he's a developer and he's like, yeah, yeah, tinker with the code. He just saw me doing it and he's like, well, I'd rather my son was doing something that expands his horizons rather than just playing the game. He's actually like, how does code work? How does the syntax work? How does the math work for the coordinates of the eye? And that kind of stuff. Are you like that a lot with with uh, a lot of different things or is it just the code? Like, are you the kind of person that likes to break things down and then and then rebuild them and see how they work? And mm. or is that just typically something that happens just with video games? Uh, no, I, I, anything I have an interest in in life, I try to learn it. I try to break it down so that I can understand it. You know, like in the matrix, when, when there's all the matrix stuff on the screen and tanks, like all I can see is like this person, that person, it's not just code to me. I can kind of see the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. It's like that for me. So, um, whenever I do anything in life, I always try and I don't just do it. Any, I, anything I, I put my heart to, I, I learn it a hell of a lot. Like when I did martial arts, I wouldn't just do my lesson for two hours on a, you know, on a Friday or whatever, and then go home and chill. I'd go home and I'd watch YouTube videos and I'd read books about all the famous people from that martial art and see their inspirations and their stories about it. And then I'd train with my friends and I'd go to this instructor's house and I'd do personal lessons. And I'd be like, this block, I feel like this block might be more effective. Can you explain to me where this block might be more effective? And I'd like break it down into blocks and try and learn it really well. It's just, it's just part of my, me as a person. So, so we're two for two now with, with, uh, you and JP with, uh, martial arts being a part of your, <laughs> your background, actually. Did you know that about JP that, uh, I did, yeah, he did. Yeah. He did karate. Uh, what, what did you take and for how long, how old were you? Wing, I did Wing Chun. It's a form of like Cantonese, um, Kung Fu. Um, I started it when I was 20. Um, uh, I had this crush at my workplace and um we were really close friends but i had i had a crush and when i actually got my first proper girlfriend later on she came to me and said like fuck i really wanted you and i was like great good timing but anyway my crush came to work one day with a a split lip and like a bruise on her face and i was like well, holy shit did you like you fall over or something she's like oh no I was, I was walking home and some guy asked for my number and i wouldn't give it him so he smashed me in the face and it was at that point that i thought if i was with you I would have done whatever I could to stop him, but I probably couldn't have stopped him. I'd have got in the way, he'd have put me on the floor, then he'd do whatever he wants. And it was just like this little moment that made me think, I can't go through the rest of my life at the mercy of other people. So I went, then went on to learn this martial art and, and, and I did it for like seven years. So, so you took Wing Chun to impress this girl and when, <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously. Yeah. No, um, it's, I it's, did a dad in single combat and we married. Yes, of course. I mean, the traditional, <laughs> there was courtship, of course, yeah. uh, before that. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, it's funny that you should mention that. And I, again, I, I, I mentioned that, uh, you know, my, my daughter, you know, uh, Junie being here now. It's funny how there's that, that really weird feeling, that almost primal instinct to protect, right? And I felt that way before exactly how you're, you're talking. Like, what happens if somebody breaks into the house? What happens if, you know, somebody, what could I do? What could I really do realistically? And it, I think it's really scary. Um, I think it's really scary for people who've never had a background in martial arts or never have done any kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat because they don't know. You know, it's that unknown. And mm -hmm. if somebody else has some amount of training before you, it's likely that, you know, they, they will be able to uh, overcome your defenses and, and be able to take you down, which is why I encourage whenever I was doing martial arts a lot, I was encouraging a lot of um, females to take martial mm -hmm. arts because, you know, like you said um, in your story, they they typically end up, you know, sometimes being a victim in, in physical altercation. So um, so I totally I get I get it, man. Like I, I get exactly where you're coming from in the mindset there. A real simple example that would work really well with this audience is this. Think of whatever game you're good at. And now imagine playing against someone that's never played that game. You you would slaughter them, right? Yeah. So if you played, like I played lots of culling, if I played someone that's never played culling, I would embarrass them. And it's the same in real life. If someone's done six months of boxing and you've done zero, that's a massive gap. So you should all make sure you have at least some semblance of a basis for defending yourself, yeah. Yeah, So so you... 
so you 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 met this girl and then what, what happened with that did you you just met somebody else and then that just happened to you said your proper girlfriend later um it's really bad yeah so i was really close friends with this girl um she was like my first proper crush and then i met this other girl at the same workplace we all worked in a, in a call center for bt uh, like a british isp and um me and this other girl started to hit it off and then we were like oh do you want to date and it's like yeah cool okay and then i went and told the other girl i was like oh actually because i was i was like until 20 i'd had no serious relationships yeah I'd no like no real serious relationships at all and i was like oh this is yeah i've got my first real girlfriend and she was just like oh yeah i actually really like you and i couldn't find a way to tell you and i was like but i was such a kind of integrity driven person that I was like, well, I'm not just going to, even though it was literally like three days into this relationship with the other girl, I'm like, well, I'm not just going to turn her down now because my actual main crush, she likes me. And then I went on to have like a four year relationship with her anyway. So did, did you know that this other girl liked you? No. Yeah. No idea. I was like chatting her up all the time and would go out. Like I didn't drink and stuff. I wouldn't feel, I was sociable, but I wouldn't go out drinking and partying and all this. And she would actually like force me to go out and when I look back at it, like there were obvious clues. Like she'd force me to go out with her. She'd try and dance with me. She'd try and get me to drink. She'd invite me out all the time. But I was just like, uh -huh, I'm stupid. And I, <laughs> you just didn't get. You just didn't get it. I didn't like, get it. No. Yeah. And then yeah, it was awkward as fuck. So so uh, why not in like high school? Because most most people, not that you have to be most people, but most people date in high school at least a little bit. Was that just not interesting to you at all, or did you just? It, was it one of those things that you just didn't, you didn't understand, so you stayed away from, or like? On reflection, now that you've said that, now that you've just, just the word high school kind of like slapped me in the face a bit. I went out, I did actually date during high school. And <laughs> now that is weird, because in my mind, like when you are, I, my brain just must have, must have archived it and went, this is what it's like. But now that I've gone back and explored my memories and gone, let's look in this archive. Oh, I was wrong. I did actually date during high school and I dated the girls that were considered like the girls to date at high school, but I was so inept. I didn't really do anything with it. So they would like me and be like, will you go out with me and whatever and would kiss and stuff. But then I, I wouldn't, I didn't fully understand the gravity of a real relationship. So I was just like, you're my girlfriend. I'm your boyfriend. When we're at school, we kiss on breaks and stuff and that's it. And really when you're like 16, 17, 18, whatever, there's more to it than that. And I just didn't extrapolate. I didn't kind of go with it. And yeah. then um, I kind of just gave up on it. Well, because you 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 don't consider that like an adult relationship. You weren't you didn't yeah. have the mental maturity to to understand what exactly you were getting into. Absolutely, and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you have to do that whole like my mom's gonna pick you up. You know, I'm gonna yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. My mom's dropping me off. We're gonna walk to the movies. Maybe if your parents <laughs> let me take you out. You know that kind of thing. Um. So so let's 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 uh, rewind uh, uh, even further back. Um. What was there anything else that you did as a kid? that was interesting for you or was there um any other hobbies that you had besides gaming you can tell us anything so that that little bit smile <laughs> come on what? Really shouldn't. I really what? Fucking no no come on it's just no, me and like, you just ignore however other many people are here just talk it's just, just me and you right me. adam this is just me and you we're just bros at a, a bar or something we're just talking yeah I, i'll tell you a secret like, I mean, i've got some dumb ass stories because i used to have a like one thing about me is my imagination is crazy like my imagination runs crazy wild and this i i can remember shit i did when i was a kid that is fucking nuts like ridiculous nuts okay i look back at it and i'm like i can't even imagine someone being that weird no I, listen i'll share a story i'll share a story with you if you share a story with us i'll show you mine if you show me yours but you, but you don't understand the gravity of mine is such that your story will be insignificant like my story will change your life you'll feel like a better person just because <laughs> you will all feel like better people yeah but you were like you were young right you were just like a kid kids are yeah. weird man that's one thing i've learned kids are weird dude they do weird stuff it's okay i'm not gonna press you into into explaining I know, fuck it why not like no no screw it hello reddit i'll see you soon um this is probably gonna end up everywhere uh no this is this, this is really stupid story that i've got where I had, I had a really, really, really hyperactive imagination. And I was, and, um, I was, I was in a school play once and there's this, there's this school play. Some people might even know the story. I can't remember the story properly, but there's these three cats. They were like, there's a main character and there's three cats. And there's a blo a bronze cat, a cat with bronze eyes, a cat with silver eyes and a cat with gold eyes. And I played the cat with bronze eyes. And 
the school had made me uh, a, an outfit, which was basically like a cat. I don't want to say cat woman outfit, but it's like, like a black skin tight black leotard thing with what was effectively in my stupid imagination a ninja mask it was like a black thing you put it over your head there's a little slit here and they actually gave me these like paper eyes that you would put over the mask and be like i'm a cat and it had ears and shit so i i, I got to keep it after after um after the play so invariably i went home and went i'm a cool guy right <laughs> like I, I used to like martial arts and stuff so i'm like yeah i'll do martial arts i'm cool I would actually sneak out of the house without my parents knowing in at night wearing my cat suit. I'd wear the mask thing inside out so it didn't have ears. So I'd literally from head to toe, I looked like a ninja with just like a slit here for eyes. And I would like sneak around the neighborhood. Like people would be walking along chatting and I'd be like sneaking around in the gardens beside them going, they can't see me. They can't see me. I'd literally run around my neighborhood basically in a cat suit. And I'm pretty sure all my neighbors would just look out the windows and be like, Chris is in a cat suit again. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, this explains so much to me. Uh, like, oh, guys, I, I think the interview's I over. I think the interview's yeah, we're over. Done. We're done, we're done. We're done. and we're done. Well, we all know why Sackreel's the way he is today, and it's a good show. And there we go. And uh, well, next week, um, I'm not sure who exactly we'll have. No, it's so it's so funny because um, that's like so. I see. I don't think that that's weird. I think that that's like I really don't. I think that that's like typical kid shit, man. If I had a ninja outfit. When I was little, I would have gone, oh my God. I wasn't allowed to watch Ninja Turtles, man. Like, I was barred from watching Ninja Turtles because it made me too violent. Like, I would watch Ninja <laughs> Turtles and I would go to like preschool or something and I would just be like, punching kids. Yeah, no, you have no idea. Like, it's weird yeah. how like things affect them. No, but if I had, if I had what I thought was a ninja outfit. You, and you're it, actually it way more. Outfit. It was an ninja outfit. Let's not be mistaken. That's, no, <laughs> if, exactly. No, anything that goes over your face fully and you can barely see out of it as a kid, it's a ninja outfit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can I add a little bit to the story? Go for it. Super no, fun. go for it. I have a, fr I had a friend at school called Rob and he was kind of like me. Like he was kind of imagine, had a big imagination and we both liked the idea of ninjas and combat and let's be cool. He came to my house once to stay over and I was like, dude, I've got a ninja outfit, check this out, put it on. He's like, dude, that's, well, he wouldn't say dude, because it was like, we're English people and we were both like 10. So he'd have been like, oh, cool. So he's like, <laughs> let's, let's go out. I'm like, I, sometimes I go outside, yeah? And, it, and I sneak around, he's like, cool, let's do it. I, but he didn't have a ninja outfit. No, don't worry about it. <sighs> black towel. And I literally, he got a black towel and like wrapped it around his head and, and then like tucked it in or whatever. And he would just be wearing like jeans, a t-shirt, and a black towel on his head. Meanwhile, I'm like sucking ninja suit, like looking swash, swish as fuck. And we'd run around the streets together. And this one time, it was ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Why am I sharing with you, Adam? Because because we're friends, and this is what we do. I didn't know this about you. I like it. I don't think it's that weird. I think you're making it like like you're making out to be way more weird than it is. I think it's weird. totally. Listen, the only difference between me and you is that like you had the balls to go outside and like spy on your neighbors. I would like spy on my sister or something or like my my parents or like stay inside the house need, or like the cat. I didn't need, I didn't need balls because I was the embodiment of the night. I was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, balls. You you were only you know you were you adopted it. I was born yeah, in it. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Exactly. But I had this watch, right? I got this watch for my birthday. And the watch, I don't know if you had these in America. It's super cool. We don't have watches like, what? in America. Oh, because that's right. Because we invented time. Yes, and you guys are behind. exactly. So over here, we have this thing called time. It helps us organize things. And um, we had this watch that had like a radar, uh, not radar, sorry, like an infrared signal thing on it. And you could like configure it to, to um, be for your TV. And you could, so like, say you had like a Sony TV, you could put on the Sony setting and you could like change the channels and you could turn it up and down or press like power off and stuff. Wait, how long so, ago was this? This was when I was 10. So this was 12, 22 years ago. What, what kind just, of place is the, <laughs> is the UK? You're like what I considered like China to be or Japan, like way ahead yeah, of us. Like, <laughs> like, I technology. had this watch in a hoverboard and I'd just like go around. <laughs> No, so anyway, I had this watch and you could like change channels. And what we'll do is when we went, for example, when I was at school and they're like, today we're going to watch a tape about geology. This is what the mountains look like. And I'd be like, Doof. oh, the TV's broken, miss. It won't come on. And she couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. It was just me with my watch. Or if you're in a pub and they're watching the football, I'd just turn it off and stuff. I was a right dick. But anyway, what I'd do is I'd go up and down the street as a ninja and I'd go to people's like windows and I'd be like, what TV is it? Oh, Sony. And I'd scuttle off 
do, 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 do. And I'd go back and I'd be like, boof, turn off the TV. Like, yeah, motherfucker. And I'd see them in the front room, like, what the fuck? Super cool. Me and, me and my friend Rob were doing it in our ninja outfits because we were cool. And then um, this guy cottoned on to it. He like figured out what we were doing. Like he turned around, he must have seen me. And then his porch light comes on. Boof. Me and Rob are in his garden. I'm a ninja. Rob's wearing a towel on his head. <laughs> Rob just runs off. I'm like, bitch, I am the knight. So what did I do? I just rolled, dropped on the floor and just laid down and stayed still. Like, I am the knight. And this guy just literally just walked over to me, just looked down at the floor. And I'm literally like a 10 year old kid in a cat outfit. <laughs> <laughs> lying in his garden like a fucking deer pretending to be still so a cheetah can't find me i'm just lying there like a complete dick and he's just like what are you doing and i just bolt <laughs> <laughs> it's the most like this is my life this is my life oh my god it was at that moment i realized i'd fucked up oh my god you might be the coolest person i'll ever have on this show i don't think anybody's childhood stories are gonna be are you gonna be better than this? I think it explains a lot, right? Because now in Day Z, I'm like, oh, guys, if I stay still, no one can yeah, see Yeah, man. It, like I, I said, it for 20 years, guys. Oh, it explains so much, man. And you've just held on to that for your whole life. Yeah. <laughs> now that you're a streamer, now you can do it. You can do it in the game. Yeah. Oh, man. You know what? At some point, somebody, like one of the developers, like uh, like Brian Hicks or something, they need to make you like. A, a cat uniform for Daisy, like a, a ninja cat, cat uniform yeah. that you can actually find and you can and go watch. around. Yeah, and a watch, and you can go, you can, you can turn off people's TVs. It's like they do it just for you, just for you. Um, that's, see, but I, again, I don't think that that's too weird. I think that you were super ballsy, man. You don't think that's weird? I don't think that's weird. It's like, all dressed as a cat lying in someone's garden pretending to be invisible when a man's looking at them. Not as a kid, man. That's just badass. Like you're just being a badass, dude. I'm a badass. I'll you are. No, I'm serious. Like if I if I was if I was an adult and I had a story about me being a ninja and having the technical advances to like turn off people's TVs and shit, <laughs> like James Bond. You're a James Bond ten year old ninja. Okay, that's fucking badass, man. I don't see why you haven't told. What do you mean Reddit? They're I'm gonna bad. make you a hero. You're you're gonna be the cat. Ninja, I don't know. We got to come up with a good name, the cat, yeah. the cat burglar or something. Like I don't know. Yeah. Like yeah, it's like something it's like, like I don't know. I sound like a shit guy that's gonna cameo in Daredevil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining you laying on the floor. Uh, okay, okay. Sorry, we derailed this thing totally now. Um, so, so I don't even know where to fucking go from there. Uh, so <laughs> anyways, up. Let's face it. Yeah, let's let's I guess let's continue. So, okay, so you you have like the the ninja, you got this thing for ninjas. Were you like cow? Did you like cowboys? Did you like all that stuff? No, you oh, were like oh, a oh. like boys boy, or were, did you just like one thing? Uh, no, because I've always had a very. It's really weird since I was a kid. I've always had a very particular, very specific model of what I consider cool. And for me, cowboys not cool. Pirates not cool. Robots not cool. But for me, martial arts, like ninjas, samurai, uh, medieval knights, archers, thats that kind of feels cool to me. Whereas when I look at a cowboy or a pirate, it seems kind of brutish and like, you know, I, I, I've never liked that. So I've, had, I've always had a very specific, I never played cowboys and Indians. Like, um, was, I don't know if you have that in America. We no, we have, like, yeah, we have, yeah. yeah, cowboys and Indians. I mean, you know. I, I don't know why we would have cowboys and Indians in America. I mean... It's not like we had Indians <laughs> and cowboys in America. I mean, I'm not even going to say that it necessarily originated here or anything, but uh, I mean, no, I, I mean, feel like that's you... part of our history. I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be <laughs> wrong. <laughs> what I meant was, as a kid, we had, like, do you have a thing kids would do called playing cowboys in Indians? Yes, no, we do. Like, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Like, I didn't know whether you actually had it called that or whether you had some other fancy American name for it. I get, I get what you're saying. Um, yeah. No, no, we, yeah, we definitely played cowboys in Indians. We had, we had all sorts of rules and stuff. I, I remember specifically me and my cousin being in the backyard and me having this bow. And like I would trick, like I would follow him, and then I'd stop and let him run, and then I'd let go of the arrow so I didn't hit him, you know. But it was like a oh. real bow, like it had like a real arrow in it. And yeah. then the parents came out, and anyways, no, we definitely, we definitely uh, played a lot of cowboys and Indians growing up. So, so, but you I was more of an army man kind of guy, like <laughs> all so, that kind of shit. So that's what I was, that's what I was about to ask is when did that all translate into the whole you know military thing? Because you, you, you do have. I don't know if I want to say a fascination with. It. Is that accurate or? Yeah. Okay, a fascination with with military. It seems like 
um you you like warfare it seems like in in a lot of ways like the medieval stuff did you did you study a lot of uh like the medieval ages and samurai and stuff when you were growing up like as a teenager looking at this because i know i did i know i was i had like every encyclopedia that i could read about the weapons and why this one was yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that yeah. and I, I heard you doing that today actually on your stream with the with the bow you were awesome. talking about the bows and stuff how'd you get yeah, into exactly. all that sorry how'd you get into all that well the well the bow one specifically um uh came from a game age of empires oh let's play england i'm english so i make it i play as england build a castle what's my unique guy longbowman holy shit his range is so far why and i'd go and google it and i'd research it because for me the, the way things the way things work for me if I, if um if i can understand the model it stays in my brain forever so um for for me like when i learned about this longbow thing if i didn't go and research it and understand the history of it and the meaning and how it functionally worked and it's logical to me i would struggle to retain it as a mem as as like a, a memory and and therefore use it as in strategy so for me when i learn about something when i learned when i first watched the film sniper and there's a guy in a ghillie suit and i was like fucking ghillie suit what is that googled it read books i've got like a bunch of books on my shelf over there about it and i'd learn about the history of it and the word ghillie comes from like the scottish word for boy or man and it means man suit and there's a certain like area in scotland where the groundskeepers would wear these ghillie suits to to catch people taking their game like taking their pheasants and stuff and I learned all this history of it because when I learn all, all the bits of it, then it kind of imprints in my brain. It's like if I learn the history of it, it locks it in. Whereas if I just learn a fact, longbows shoot far. That's not enough for me. I need to know why did they shoot far? Oh, these are special wood from Wales. And they were used in the Battle of Agincourt to beat the French. And the draw, the, the strength of it was 110 pounds. And you had to, and it, I, by learning all the little bits, it makes it stick, which is why when I play games like DayZ, you know, people always say, oh my God, he thinks he's a soldier. I don't think I'm a soldier. Let's face it. But I, read so much about military stuff that it sticks with me and i can i can immediately take it from my memory and plop it into a strategy in a, in a blink of an eye when i see a, a situation occurring and i've been like that from day one like like i said with um with uh what was it uh warcraft one mm -hmm. I, was, I, would, I would sit there and i'd test what's the perfect ratio of of archers to soldiers to make sure that I've got the most efficient force. Like how many majors should I have? I'd, I'd like min max everything. And then I'd, then I'd think it through and extrapolate the model. Like my, my, my soldiers are gonna charge in and tie up the enemy soldiers. How, you know, how long do they take to die? How many, how many archers should I have? I've always been that kind of person. So I've, I've, my, my knowledge of history and military stuff is all come from, I see something, I'm like, that's cool. Why is it cool? And then I learn back from there. Um, what? <clears throat> What what was it that uh, drew you to that? Do you know, like, what made you want to learn about it so much? Like, was there, did you just think it was cool? Did you just, I mean, why why that strategy? Why that pinpoint, you know, to some things? Because it's part of my psyche. It's part of my psychology. There is a certain beauty and harmony that I get from understanding a model and then See, having a situation come and being able to just figure out a solution for it. It's always been like that. So there's this one moment I remember, there was the first time, it was the first time it hit me that um, that you could do this against other people. This is, for me, there's a perfect, there's a majesty of putting my myself against an opponent, another person, not AI. Like I don't play single player games because it's just beating AI. Like you're just beating a game that's designed to let you win if you do the right things. Beating a person that's trying to outthink you, they're trying to outsmart you, trying to outplay you. And I remember uh, we had two PCs in my house and we had this uh, back in the day before the before like 56K and whatever, 33K, whatever it is. Um, you play multiplayer games by connecting your two PCs with a serial cable over a COM port. And then you'd like go into DOS and you'd be like, set myself to port four and all this shit. And I, play, and I played um, Duke Nukem 3D against my brother. I've told this story on stream a, a few times. I'm sure people know it already, some of them. Um, my brother and I were playing Duke Nukem and I ran into this. Uh, it was on the, the first map, the map you all probably know from the demo, which is like a cinema. And I went over the counter and I went in the room behind the counter and there's some armor or something. And my brother was outside the counter and he was aiming at me. And he said, we were in the same room. And he's like, oh, I know you're in that room. I'm going to kill you. And I was like, fuck, I'm stuck in the room. But oh, God, what do I do? What do I do? And something just went in my head. Try crouching. So I hit crouch. And I, and I went past the, the counter and it was, I was too low for the counter for him to see me. 
and I got out and I went behind him and killed him. And he's like, what the fuck are you cheating? That's, oh my God. And it, it was in that moment I went, I outsmarted him. And then f- from the moment I realized that worked, that became a reflex strategy for me. So if I was ever playing anyone else, any of my other friends, it wasn't like, oh, I'm pinned in. What should I do? Oh, I'm going to crouch. It was just, it was a reflex. It was just like, it came naturally to me. And this gave me kind of a euphoria when I'm in multiplayer and I'm basically putting myself against other people. There's a certain euphoria that comes from consistently out thinking and outplaying someone through like systematic modeling of the situation and finding the right solution. There's something that's really uh, rewarding for me. Like, you know, like some people when they hear certain music or they paint something and they get a certain satisfaction from it, it's the same for me, but mine is kind of like psychological challenges against another person's psyche did you did you like <clears throat> chess did you ever play chess growing up i no, feel like I chess would have been like right up your alley yeah i was so into computers and stuff that like someone saying oh this one you can move it here and this one you can move it here it was so kind of slow for me that i, I imagine i'd have loved it if i'd got into that before computers mm. maybe i'd be a chess player by now but for me computers and games and stuff came in so early that that was like a step back in in terms of like enjoyment because it was literally like you know click i win you know you move your piece of wood past my piece of wood for me it was more like you know at least with gaming there's a semblance of coolness in like my tank killed your tank my my i shot you with an arrow i sniped you i blew you up up. and any anybody who watches your stream they see they see this every day you you have a very particular way of going about things you love to explain you love to uh, you know, show your tactics, talk about it, you know, have a discussion even uh, at certain mm-hmm. times, you know, in between rounds and stuff. Did you did you study like strategy like you did, you know, like the, the long bow, for instance, or is that something that has just kind of come to you as you have been playing multiple games over the years? Because for myself, I never I never did any real study of, you know, military strategy or anything like that. But you seem like the type that might have actually delved into it. Well, here's here's the thing. I feel like from the variety of things I've learned. So like I would learn about the longbow and I'd be like, okay, you could, now if you outreach your opponent, if you, if you outreach them, you can kite them. So they, you know, you, you hit them, they try to move within range of their weapon. You stay away from them. You hit them again. Not only have I learned about the longbow, I've learned about a, a, a method of combat called kiting. And then through stealth, I learn about evasion. And through ambush, I learn about bursting people down and so on. So through the variety of things I've read about, from all the way from ninja tactics that I read about for nin- when I was into ninjas and samurais for stuff and longbows and medieval uh, combat and formation combat and then sniping in modern combat and all that kind of stuff, I actually, it's kind of like I've transcended needing to learn individual things now from history. You, I have a matrix of tools that are based that. that it's nothing to do with the longbow. Now it's just kiting and it's nothing to do with ghillie suits. It's just stealth. I kind of see the bigger picture. So when I play a game, the perfect game, as, as you can tell from my last 145 hours of streaming, is pulling because you have all these different elements in there and I didn't need to learn, oh, this is good for this and this is good for that. I could kind of immediately apply all of my strategies. All I needed to do is test out stuff and go, how, how fast can I fire this? How far can I fire this? How many of these can I hold? What works against what? And that's why when I look on Reddit and people are like, this is overpowered, this is overpowered, this is overpowered. All I see is easy solution, easy solution, easy solution. Because you take the time. You take the time to, to figure that out, and mm. you've got the history with it. Mm. Um, so, so, you, so you had this fascination with uh, the military. Um, was there ever a point where you were like, I'm going to go into the military, and you didn't? Or what, what happened with that? Did you ever try, or did you just merely want it tried. as a hobby? I, I, I dreamt about it. Like, I think, oh, I think I'd be really good in the military, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I never had, I never had, I, I always felt like I never had the physical ability because I wasn't the kids out there playing, you know, playing basketball, playing football, playing rugby, running around. I was more like get home, sit still. And it was more about expanding my brain than my body. I always felt like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to make it past all the trials. Like, Hey, go and run for 10 miles with a massive backpack and, you know, run through the mud and climb up posts and all this shit. I was like, I couldn't be bothered. Um, and it's something that's plagued me to this day, actually. Like I, I keep my body in okay shape, but I've never won. I've never had the discipline and it is a discipline to excel at my body. Like every now and then I'll have like a stint for like a few months where I work out and I see res- results and I'm like, Oh cool. But I, I, there's just a certain part of me that thinks if you just sit down and, and, and expand your mental horizons, you can excel at what you enjoy doing. 
Whereas to maintain my body is more a physical thing that I would only enjoy part of the time. So some kind of logic in my brain says, don't, don't, don't put any emphasis into that. Like be lazy with your working out and to put, spend all your time on mental stuff. I guess so I never, I guess I felt like I'd never, I couldn't be bothered to run around in, you know, fields and shit to, to pass the training. Um, so, so does that, was that like, that's, that's a very mature of you to say, like, and have that perspective and realism about yourself. Did, was that hard when you came to that conclusion mm-hmm. at, at the hard, time? It's hard to this day. Like when I, when you look at people like Bajira, like, he looks oh like yeah, he's yeah. Well, out of marble. I mean, let's not, I like, let's not compare to Bajira. Okay. Let's just, <laughs> I mean, let's, that's the high end. That's yeah. The high Cause end, we're right? all going to kind of fall short of Bajira. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. the, but, um, yeah, so what, like I always compare myself, like it's, it's human nature, right? When you're good at A and you see someone good at B, you're like, ah, fuck, I want to be that. Um, but I do have the kind of bigger picture in mind, which is if I keep excelling at the things I enjoy and it's my job, I'm going to have a fairly successful life. And at least I'm not that lazy that I won't maintain myself. It'd be very easy because I, I eat like, dude, I eat trash. I eat like biscuits, cakes, biscuits, cake all day. Like it would be very easy for me to get really out of shape. So I do maintain myself well but I don't have the mental discipline. And I wish I did. If I could click my fingers and go, you have the discipline to go to the gym four days a week or three days a week for the rest of your life. I'd love that. I just don't have it in me. Yeah. It's, it's tough for me too. I, I I'm, I'm very similar in that regard. Um, so, so let's go in a different direction now. So did you, uh, I guess it's called college in the UK. I'm sorry. I'm ignorant to, um, or university, right? It would, is that what the term, I don't know. So we've got we've got kind of three stages. You got like pro, you got like primary school when you're like a kid mm-hmm. and it's like A B C D whatever. Then you got like secondary school, which is when you're like ten to like sixteen, where okay. you learn like English, math, biology, blah blah blah. And then after secondary school, you've got college. Well, you got something called sixth form, which is kind of the same as college. It's just like the first step of further education. And then you got university. So you got two stages. Usually you go primary school, secondary school college or sixth form and you get some kind of qualification and that qualification if it's good enough gets you into a university where you actually get like a degree and stuff okay so so where where along that education did you did you decide like oh this isn't really for me like a formal education i want to go into into twitch where were you at at that point like where was it from hey i'm you know 20 something years old to hey i'm on twitch what did you do during that time was it education was it spending time with your friends was it working what did you do Gaming. Gaming? You just gamed and gamed and gamed? So, so I finished school. I got, I, 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 I was lazy at school for the, for like, of the last six years, I was lazy for like five. And then there's this one teacher called uh, Mr. Kirk. His first name began with W. I never found out what his first name is. So his like initials were MWK and people called him Mr. Wonderful Kirk. And he was this really inspirational teacher. And he showed me that I had a real, um, strength in science and once he taught me the love he taught me to realize that i was good at science and then i got pride from being good at science and then i applied that pride to all my other subjects and now i started getting really good like i was no me by no by no means bad i was like b's and c's across the board but i could have easily been a's across the board but i was just i was too lazy until it was too late but um i got through school i had like a bunch of b's a bunch of c's and a couple of a's my uh, one of my a's was in music I was good at music back then. Anyway, uh, and then I went to college and I did an advanced course in IT, which was where you learn about computer components. You learn about the history of computing. You learn a bit of coding. You learn a bit of like how to build a PC, put in a heat sink, put in a hard drive, that kind of stuff. And I was with three friends, Rob, the cat ninja towel guy. Uh, He's been friend. a friend for a long time then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's like my main friend. Yeah. Gotcha. And um me, I'll, I'll cry to really myself cool. later, but that's fine. It's it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was me, him, and my other friend called Paul. And both of those had really hyper strict parents that would be like, make sure you do your homework, make sure you're learning, make sure you do your homework, make sure you're learning. And then we all applied for the same university and those two got in and I didn't. And I was kind of crushed. Um, so at that point, I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to get a job, blah, blah, blah. And I went and got a job. And I ended up working with Rob. Oh, really? So you actually ended up in the same... Did, so he went to university and then you guys just ended up in the same job or did... Okay, so what was what job was that? You said IT? I, yeah, IT is just technical support for like a, a, an ISP. So it's like, hi, you're through to Chris. How can I help? Well, my broadband's down. Okay, da, 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 da. And that's where I learned all about the ins and outs of broadband. But again, because of how I've explained my brain works, 
what most people did was they did the training and they went, if a customer has problem A, the solution is B. If a customer has problem C, the solution is D. And for me, it was, I transcended A equals B, you know, C equals D. I learned everything about broadband. Like I'd go home and be like, what is multiplexing? What is, what is line attenuation? What is signal to noise ratio? I'd learn the science behind it. And then when a customer came to me with a problem that wasn't A, B, or C, I could still fix it because I understood the nature of broadband not following a guide like if they say this do this if it doesn't work do this if it doesn't work send it to the next guy up i i kind of transcended the training and just learned the science and then smashed the training smashed the job we got promoted like every six months for, for, for years became a manager all that kind of stuff you you um so you approach it the same way that you did with uh everything with, with everything and that seems like the way that you learn okay so so what about women we talked a little bit about women before, you know, like it, it was it the same thing. Like, are you, did you, cause okay. The little personal, you know, background, uh, whenever I was getting like sexually active, I went and looked that shit up. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna jump. Like I looked it up. I looked up what was the, you know, vagina, what the, where's this, you know, at, where's that at? Like I got into it, man. Now with your mindset, I'm just curious. Did you do the same thing? Did you? You did it. Completely oblivious. No, because because <laughs> why is this? Why is this thing the one that you decide like not to like get in depth about? Because I feel like I want you to be as as dapped at the you know clitoris as you are at everything else that you do in your life. So what? Why? Why not? Why not with uh, with women? I I don't know. I really don't like. I never really. I didn't think much about relationships. They kind of, like I said, I had a few girlfriends during school and I had a few crushes here and there, but I, it, I'll tell you one thing. I had a, I had some rough things happen to me while I was growing up that really fucked with me a lot. And I kind of felt like I'm the guy no one's ever going to date. So why spend my mental time learning about, learning about how to talk to women and about sex? Like I, obviously I knew about sex and I'd done bits and bobs, but I didn't apply my full kind of like way of thinking of things because I kind of labeled myself as like the sad guy no one likes. That's why when I started getting like these really hot girlfriends, I was like, why the fuck do people like me? This is weird. And I had to start from scratch because I kind of labeled myself as no one's ever going to like me. Um, I had some physical hangups that I hated. I had some psychological hangups that I hated. I had some things happen to me throughout, throughout my early life that made me think a lot less of myself. So I thought my only strengths in life were going to be being good at games, being good at strategy, being good at my job. I, I literally wrote myself off as like never going to have a proper relationship. And then Shannon came along. This exotic was, Canadian yeah. woman. <laughs> yeah. uh, at that point, I started researching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there it is. Okay. No, oh, um, that's a penis. Do you, do you, uh, <laughs> do you, uh, I, let me, how, how am I going to, how am I going to say this? Do you still, have those same doubts about yourself or ha do you feel like you've come along and that these are no longer issues for you? Um, or is this something that just lives with you still that, that kind of not feeling good enough kind of thing? Um, Twitch has helped me a lot. Like if you ever watch my first YouTube videos, my first YouTube videos were just good gaming with no, it was literally just clips of me doing good shit. And then I'd start to add text, like I'd gained the um, confidence, if you will, to like add text to say like, oh, this is what I'm thinking. And then like years later, I'd like go, hi guys, this is Sacros. This is a video of me I play in, I'm playing Crisis and um, I'm using this gun because it's got the highest DPS. And, I'm, and I'd talk a little bit. And then when I started streaming, I was voice only, no webcam because I hated how I looked, like I hated how I looked. And I thought people would just slate me all day. Like, oh my God, look at this, look at that. Um, and then after a after like a year or so of streaming with no webcam and people just loved me, it was like, he's funny, he's intelligent, um, he's entertaining, he's insightful. People would say nice things to me for so long that I'm like, it got to the point that I didn't believe in how I looked. I just thought that I'm so happy with how people like me that even if someone said in chat, look at his face, I'm like, I don't care what you think of my face. If there's a thousand people beside you that are like, he's funny, he's intelligent, he's entertaining, he's insightful, he's the person I want to watch. So I never really, it's, it's weird, but I never really came to terms with liking myself visually. I just came to terms with, people seem to like my personality enough that this is the face that comes with it. 
So, so, so it was almost like logically, this makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because, yeah. I had to get to a logical model of this where I, where in my brain, psychologically, it's stacked up to say, you're so high up on some of these values that even when people take the piss out of your face or whatever, you're, you're still in the positive. And then that's when I turned the webcam on and went like, hi guys. Like, I don't know if you ever watched my early streams, I'd have a webcam, but it would be off. And then I say, I got a really good headshot or something in DayZ, which was very regular. I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, I'd turn the webcam just for a second and be like, and then turn it off. Oh and yeah, just, I remember I remember those streams, yeah. Little fleeting moments of me, or Shannon would come over and I'd be like, and she'd say something, I'd turn it on and I'd just be this sheepish guy in the corner like, don't hate me, don't say anything horrible, don't hate me, don't say anything horrible. But now, I'm, I'm where I am. It's, it's funny because my first initial uh, reaction of you when I met you for the first time at PAX East was a really confident guy. It's fun. It's funny because, and I don't know if that was just because I think I think that I think that you and Shannon complement each other really well, and I think she kind of brings that confidence out of you. Sometimes I know that now, but then it seemed like you were you were just a super confident guy. I remember, and I t I've told this story before. You've heard this story before, but uh, you know, just for the viewers that are watching, um, my first PAX East uh, was my first convention. I was. I didn't know anybody. I didn't really know what I was doing there. I was just trying to get to know people and network a little bit. And uh, Shannon and Sacriel really took me under their wing. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to get into the uh, the Twitch party at PAX East mm -hmm. if it wasn't for them. And they got me in and I got to meet some Twitch people and kind of my, my career and especially with networking, everything all kind of stemmed from there. But I remember there was this very specific time where I went up to Sacriel and I was just like, thank you so much for for getting me, you know, in here and letting me meet all these people and all this stuff. And you just looked at me and you said, you deserve this. You said, you deserve this. And I know that you had been watching, you know, how much hard work I put into my stream and, and all that stuff. But for me to hear somebody say that to me and go, you deserve this. It's weird. It's almost like a, not, it wasn't like, you know, as crazy as like the, uh, the, you know, uh, goodwill hunting, you know, like, you know, the, it's not your fault, you know, like it's not your fault thing, but yeah. it's weird to be told from somebody else that, that you deserve that. And so it's, it's, it's weird for me to hear you say that you have so much problem with your confidence and everything, because you seem super confident. In fact, your confidence made me feel confident. Like when you were like, you deserve this, it's like, you knew it. And, and I believed you, you know, like I, I, I dared to actually believe <laughs> that you said it cause you said it. Um, so it's strange for me to hear that you say that you, you struggle with that because it's, it's all a front. It really is like uh, people seem to think I'm confident, but I'm really not. And it's what's strange is even now, like this show, I feel like I'm getting away with something right now in the, in my mind, I'm like, how am I getting away with this? And I feel like at some point someone's just going to say something and the penny's going to drop and it'll all just crumble. And then I'll be like, holy shit, I am this wreck that I think I am. So right now I feel like in this thing, people are like saying nice things in chat and you're laughing at my jokes and stuff. I'm literally 50% of my brain right now is just going, how are you getting away with this? How are you getting away with this? How are you getting away with this? And that's yeah. still there even after like yeah, the years and the, you know, the thousands of viewers and all the success you've had on Twitch that still sits back there. Mm -hmm. That's tough, man. That's tough because, because, um, are you, you know, maybe this is getting a little too deep, but are you scared of failure? Like you just, mm -hmm. yeah, Perfect. yeah, I, I, I can sympathize with that, uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, so let's, let's talk about something a little bit happier. Let's talk about Shannon. I do want to talk about Shannon because you guys are such a good team and, um, you know, I've gotten to know you both so well. Uh, can you tell us, you know, how you met Shannon, how that, you know, all went down, if you're comfortable with it, if not, then that's fine too. Um, but that was all through Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. So you I was, I was at the time I was the biggest Daisy YouTuber and my videos were kind of everywhere. And I started noticing these comments from, from Shannon. Um, and she was trying to convince me to stream because I was only doing YouTube at the time. And I looked up what stream it was and I did my first stream and she was there in chat and people would be like, Sakura, what's your favorite weapon? And because she watched every one of my videos 10 times, she's like, his favorite weapon is the M24. Sometimes he uses the DMR if he's in closer range because it's have a right, higher rate of fire. Like she knew all my like reasoning and everything. And I was like, holy shit. So I modded her. I was like, you can be a mod, like, you know, everything. Um, and then we became friends over time. And then eventually she came over to England to go to like a gaming convention and we met up and, and we just kind of hit it off from there. Like we already kind of knew each other fairly well from, from talking on Skype and, you know, messaging each other and whatever else. And, um, 
yeah, she ended up moving over, got a, like a temporary visa thing and stayed for a couple of years and became my full-time manager. Um, and that was, that was the kind of start of it. You guys, um, you guys, I, I really, it's, I, I love seeing you guys together. You guys are incredible together because you're so, you're so casual. Like you guys just seem like you, you really know each other. And um, it's crazy that you guys met through Twitch. Like, I know that when you guys say, like, we bleed purple, like, it's 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 insane to me that you met. I've had mods of mine that have met, you know, and they started dating and, you know, they're engaged and stuff like that now. But, like, just to, to I mean, I feel so connected with Twitch, but if I had met Cora through Twitch, I feel like I would just be, like, you know, like, mm-hmm. locked in. Do you, do you feel like the Twitch thing is, is very, like, much a family to you? Is it? Um, you know, and the people that you've met. Absolutely. Yeah. Like there's probably like 20 people from my chat that have been to my house. We've had meals together. I've taken them out for meals with Dean when we're at conventions and stuff. Um, there's lots of stories of my mods helping each other out when they're in, when people in the community are having problems, like where they'll literally buy plane tickets for each other for thousands of dollars to help them move to a certain place or pay rent or all sorts of amazing things that you, you never really hear about on stream, but this is, this is definitely a massive kinship. Yeah. And you, and you cultivate that in your chat, uh, quite a bit and in your stream, um, which we're going to actually get to in the next hour, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take a five minute break. Uh, let this beautiful man, uh, go put on his ninja outfit, his cat ninja outfit. And come back. <laughs> I'm going in. Yeah. Uh, and we will be back um, in the second hour. We'll talk about a little bit about how he got into Twitch, um, you know, what he's doing right now and uh, some other just general tips. So I will see you guys in five minutes. Stick around. We will be right back. <laughs> 